All right, so here is the uh, here's day two of my development on this project. Um, as you can see, I've added a display. That's pretty much the only major change, except writing the code to make the display actually do what it's supposed to do. That relay, that LED does work, but this is an extremely lousy breadboard. I also went ahead and worked out how I was going to handle the phono inputs because it has two phono inputs, but it requires two relays. So this is the only time it will ever have two relays triggered is on the phonos. Otherwise, it hopefully will never have two fired at once. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because this is a uh, this is a basic example of how the uh, Denon I'm using does its audio input. Each side of this switch is connected directly to an RCA jack, um, so we'll just pretend we're we're just showing one one channel here. Um, and in the normally closed position of these switches, the sliding contact is connected to the back. So, as you can already see, the center contact of each switch is connected to the normally closed contact of the switch in front of it. So, in order for audio to get from phono to the receiver, it has to pass through all of these switches. And turning an input on just basically reroutes it, so it just breaks the, if you want tuner, it breaks the chain at the tuner, and it's still going through these switches. And when any of these switches fail, which they will, it becomes a nightmare because no input works. What I'm going to be doing in this even more roughly drawn schematic is replacing everything with a relay and flipping relays on one at a time and sending them down a current, you know, a common audio bus. That way, you know, my audio getting into the stereo is not dependent on the relays in front of it. Um... And that was part of the whole reason I started deciding to do this with Arduino. Um, it's because is the, these switches, they're what they call six-pole double throw, meaning they have six sets of contacts. And four contacts on each switch are used to switch AC into a very early LCD segment display. Uh, so it can basically display the name of the input. Um, and by doing it with this simplistic, or maybe, you know, well, Doing it with the relays, um, I either have to add a whole bunch more relays, which is not feasible, or I have to do some stuff with some SCRs and trigger all, um, I think there's 32 different segments on this display. I I'm not going to do that, so that was why I decided to go with Arduino, because I can get different, uh, different, L different OLED displays that are just about the right size, and I can just drop that in there. But I did the um I did it on this because it was just it came in the kit and you know it, it, it gets the routines to talk to a display in there. Uh so the actual Arduino circuit itself is pretty simple. There is the usual <clears throat> shift register, 74 AC 595 circuit. Um, right now I am driving LEDs exactly the way they are, but when I go to drive relays, I can just connect a ULN2803 directly to the output to the 595 and drive the relays directly off to that. Uh, switch inputs are analog, believe it or not. Uh, what I have is I have the 5 volt line going through some random resistor values to each switch, which basically... When you close one, it throws a different voltage value onto the analog zero line, which is sampled by the Arduino's internal 10-bit ADC. I have 100K, in this case, resistor to ground, just to pull that down so the input's not floating all over the place and giving us uh, incorrect inputs. Because literally, every time we press, <clears throat> every time we press a switch, the, the, it, it's just basically it's spitting out a number between 0 and 1024. Uh, so if the if if you have things floating, it really gets screwed up. Uh, that also means we have to, due to the fact that resistors are not entirely accurate unless you're buying high tolerance uh, resistors or low tolerance resistors. Um, 
yeah, I guess it would be you buy low to yeah, low tolerance. Um, I don't buy fancy electronics like that. Um, the stuff I work on requires 10 to 20. Um, but that's how I can read five switches with one wire going over here to the uh, analog zero input. Uh, the whole goal was to keep the pin count between the Arduino and the rest of the hardware as, as low as possible so that I could maybe use a smaller Arduino with less pins. Right now, I only need uh, five digital pins and an analog pin, which is not bad. That's six total pins. I, I can probably uh, figure out a way to, to use a much smaller board or even just the bare microcontroller itself if those pins are available. Um, boot up is pretty quick. I'll hit the reset button and you can see what it does because it's going to change the LED. Yep. And it goes to off, goes to auxiliary. Eventually I want to try to add some, add a FRAM to this so it, it can store the last known input without having to burn an EEPROM up. Um, so Yeah. I've spent so much time working and trying to hack the code together that I spent no time putting together a presentation and this is horrible and it's jerky and I apologize and eventually I'm going to get all this up on GitLab and I'll have some nicer, much nicer schematics and more detail and maybe in the future I'll make a nice uh, proper video when this is not all looking like a, a, a mess waiting to uh, fall apart. Um, so yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.